One, two, three. My name is Carl Powell. I am Marco Gasali. I'm Asaran Dala. Carl Dial. I'm the... Wow. Yes, Hola, soy Marco Gasali. Y ustedes están escuchando... Again, to the Escapist Corner. Moro, Rantala Lassa, that's a better bet. So I'm going to let this come to the corner. Yeah, so welcome to the Escapist Corner. I started with CrossFit six years ago, 2010, I did my level one, and uh, I came to CrossFit uh, through my uh, studies, I studied sports science in Heidelberg, oh, okay. and uh, I did all kind of sports, um, but especially uh, soccer. Um, the last I played was um, four to five times a week, so it was kind of, I don't want to say, yeah, semi-pro. Kind of. We had some semi-pros in our team, but I was a student and just trained and played. And uh, I started um, with a fitness, fitness training, exercising, kind of bodybuilding. Um, I came to uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bought his book and uh, tried to work out at home. Started with 17 with functional fitness, or body weight stuff, pull-ups, push-ups, stuff like that. And then um, I came to the sports science, uh, studied it, and um, played soccer. I did uh, barbell movements like uh, powerlifting, deadlift, squats, bench press uh, during my studies and um, to get a little stronger. Uh, I must say I was a really slow athlete, but very good in uh, endurance and um, stamina. I did a lot of interval training on the, ro on the runner, mm -hmm. the uh, treadmill. And uh, so I needed a little um, strength and I started with the barbell. So I came to the barbell and uh, did deadlifts and squats, got a little faster. And um, I came to Olympic weightlifting. I um, did the certificate, um, trainer certificate. And uh, through uh, the studies, I came to CrossFit. I saw the first uh, contact was a, was a video um, from uh, the CrossFit head coach, uh, Nicole Carroll. I don't know what yeah, you know yeah. that. Uh, she did overhead squats. Um, it was uh, like a small challenge against a huge guy. Yeah, yeah I've uh, seen that with. with uh, I think it's with Kelly Storet also. He's uh, kind of commenting that. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying something like, he already says before, like this, ankle mobility. <laughs> no, no. But he says like the shoulder mobility in this big guy sucks ass. So he's gonna just work against his body all reps. Yeah. And this girl has no problem with the mobility, so she's gonna win. And then they start. Yeah. I think it's that one. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was max reps with a uh, body weight overhead squats. Yeah. And she did like 36 reps, and the guy did like 10. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That I was impressed. I was pretty very impressed. And uh, so we tried the overhead squat, and I was close to crash the mirror in the in the gym. <laughs> They were allowed, like people who what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it was like, whoa, it's only 20 kilo, the empty bar, and they did it with 50. Um, yeah, so we, so we figured out what's CrossFit like, and uh, we did the level one. Um, we started really small. Uh, we all, always trained in a small group, like four to five people pushing each other. We, I always had a timer when I did my workout, like 45 yeah. minutes, and then I'm done in the gym, so no talking, no whatever. Work out. Yeah, just time and work. Mm. So before that, just uh, you were saying football and barbells and stuff. Within the football uh, team, or uh, uh, were you the only one doing barbells, or which yeah. is like kind of a? Yeah, I was the only one. A anybody else was like, oh, it's not good for your knees, for your back. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, I started in the lowest class, and I, then I got faster. I didn't really work on my soccer skills, but I was really compared to the others really fast so I moved up seven leagues oh. and uh, yeah Bec only because I was the first guy at yeah, the ball guy in the yeah, I just have to be f yeah. the first on the ball so kick and run <laughs> yeah uh, it, it gets you very far if you just if you're fast then you're, yeah. you're gonna be uh, yeah. an outlier no but um, so where are you born and raised if I may ask uh, I was born in uh, Heidelberg it's uh, near Mannheim Frankfurt in yeah. uh, Germany, and I was uh, raised in Neckarsteinach. It's a really, really small town up the river, and uh, yeah, there I yeah. played soccer, tish tennis, table tennis, um, or ping pong, tennis, uh, everything like inline skating, 
I tried everything, yeah. but uh, stayed with the uh, soccer and the barber. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, have you? Uh, did you do anything like before you made into CrossFit and you wanted to do that? Did you have any other profession or? Uh, yeah, um, I worked as a um, sport therapist with uh, people who had injuries, who had um, yeah, broken broken bones or uh, like dislocations and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and post-operative uh, people. Okay. And uh, I worked there four years, and uh, I was uh, I would say kind of nerdy to how the body move, moves, how um, mm. how the functions of the joints, the the, the muscles, and. Uh, I already used uh, the functional movements for rehab for yeah. the people. They regularly do like leg extensions and leg curls and uh, no more isolation movements yeah, with it. Yeah. yeah, just stability. And I started with the uh, air squats or lunges, and yeah. with uh, with people who came from who, who were sporty before. I really did pistols, and they they had really good progress. But yeah. we figured out you have to. Um, serve many people in the in the rehab, so you can't really focus on one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it was mm. this gap. I came in, and then mm. I figured out, yeah, CrossFit is, is the kind of thing you really can coach people that intense with the functional movements and personal, yeah. and they get the results. And um, this was yeah, exactly it's a way, yeah, it's a way. It's before it's pre. Uh, how do you call it? It's like no rehab. It's like pre pre injury. Yeah. Like okay, I'm gonna I'm not gonna get you. Probably we all see these athletes and everything, but 99% of the people that go to CrossFit is just okay. I want to get fit. I want to be healthy lifestyle, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, that's that's the goal of our training. So that was always my goal to to prevent injuries or to rehab from injuries yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, to make them better and longer, healthier. Yeah, and uh, I came to to CrossFit and we started with like five guys. And uh, my sisters were there, my mother, my father, they <laughs> all, all had to join the whole family. They were like, oh, no, uh, I Let's never. put people into the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need some more people. Yeah, my mother was, uh, I needed three years to, to get her into CrossFit because she never did any sports. She had a, yeah. a spine surgery with a 17. Wow. Um, you wouldn't operate this today, but yeah. they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did never, ever any sports. She, she walked with a dog mm -hmm. and go swimming. Yeah. So she... She did, kind of, but nothing with a uh, with a like, functional fitness or. You know. I think this uh, this is something that I notice, and I think it's for a lot of like people that are box owners and so on. It's kind of this: you're serving a lot of people. If you have a box and you have a couple hundred members, maybe, but it's not very uncommon that the closest family is not even there because they don't want to be coached by you. You know. Yeah. So it's not always very typical that you have your family in the box, which is a, like a misconception that you think that oh, my, my, the entire family is going to be here. Uh, I think we're, we're kind of lucky we're, we're having um, our families, or at, at least our wives there. But like for... Um, I think my parents will join, but they live in Chile. It's kind of a long trip every yeah. time. No, but I, 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 <laughs> so I got my, my mom to join CrossFit and... Uh, like for me, for me also personally, uh, I've, I've been like talking a bit about this kind of thing with my dad, who has uh, sort of like a type, di type two diabetes going on also. And uh, uh, the thing is, you always have to like approach in a very slow way because you kind of sound, sound like a uh, you know uh, a Scientolog or something like that if you're. <laughs> if you start to jabber too much about, hey, you know, you shouldn't eat that, you should, you know, do maybe a deep squat yeah. and so on. But people don't even understand what a squat is to begin with. They don't understand what food is. We, I mean, we, a good, good uh, meme from yesterday was like, there's nothing such, there's no such thing as junk food. There's junk and there's food. But to get there to people to understand that is, it's, uh, it's nothing that hap happens overnight, and I think for us it's kind of uh, we live in a in a sphere where we see like you know, that's a bad choice. We see all these red flags, but most people don't do, and we are kind of hey, what are you doing? Like, and um, 
at the same time. Uh, for me, also, we, we have a lot of discussion about food quality and so on. It's too, like, if I cheat, I eat something is, that is bad, which happens quite often. It's kind of, yeah, you know, my willpower is not, it's not there. It, it's not going to help me. It's, it's, we're programmed in certain ways. So, you know, uh, I'm not going to be able to withstand all, all the things. And that's kind of when you create a CrossFit box. Um, this is my opinion, is that you kind of create the sphere where you want to be. Uh, where you can actually get in to influence so many people in their lives and they're going to start to hang around with people that are healthier yeah. and, and without sounding too like religious about it but it's kind of what's happening yeah like peer group if, yeah. if they all do yeah. it you really implement these uh, things into your life yeah that's that's exactly what we need to do or what I want to do what we do in our box if one starts and um, is um, stuck to uh, or, or decide to do a, a, spe a special um, uh, a nutrition plan or a, it's, maybe if it's only calorie tracking or yeah. mm -hmm. cutting out the sugar or the sweets or whatever and uh, yeah they are inspired or people get hooked up Just like yeah, me. I think it's, uh, of course they do it in a group within a group. It's like you feel the peer this positive peer pressure, I would say. Yeah, that you want to yeah. keep up. Uh, so no, I, would, I don't want to let down. Uh, so, for example, if I do it uh, and my wife it doesn't follow up, so what's the sense? I mean, she's going to be buying candy. Usually, it's the other way around. I buy makes candy. It, she makes says, it no. even harder. Yeah, yeah, it makes it even harder. Yeah. Exactly. So she's saying, "Hey, I have one person at home telling me, hey, 'Hey, don't do it because we're on a challenge.'" And then I have another guy at the office say, "'Hey, don't do it.'" Yeah. We're so it's way better yeah. in the way they have to sneak out every time I go to the supermarket <laughs> and buy myself. But this is peer pressure. The more the bigger the group, the more pressure you have, and the yeah. more confident you feel about, "Okay, I can do this. Yeah. I don't want to let these people yeah, down." You, you see that other people can do it. They can yeah. change it, and they can stuck to the plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. And uh, referring to what you mentioned before, like the, the, the family, t getting the family doing CrossFit or into CrossFit or doing what you do or what I do, just like my mom, it's um, the, the problem is in the beginning, my mom sees me, sees an athlete working out really, really hard and yeah. crazy. And uh, she compares herself to me. To me and yeah. that's, that's the wrong approach. She really should go, okay, why do I do this? Okay. Yeah. I do squats because it's really a good functional movement you can train the whole body with just one exercise you you can develop strength mobility yeah. endurance if you do many squats yeah. um, and you prepare for life so getting up off the toilet or from a chair or from uh, from a uh, couch yeah, yeah sure. I, uh, a good a good example is my uh, granddad we we sat on the couch and uh, we got over to to eat to dinner and he was like hey Gregor pick me up I was like, hey, come on. <laughs> you can't eat if you can't get up. Yeah. So There's your I, dinner. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I, I left him and I, I told him, okay, I pick you up if you do um, just one hour of workout per, per week. He was like, no. I was like, okay, see you later. <laughs> and then he, he, he got into I picked him up and we got, every Wednesday we, we did a workout. It was just exercising. We did just uh, the, the bike, mm -hmm. seated bike, mm -hmm. just to get in motion. He was really, really, um, he had a stroke, uh, stroke? Yeah. yeah. So he couldn't move his arm pretty good and it was a little wobbling and walking. And uh, he had a bar where he can hold himself. himself. And we did a, a quarter squat. Quarter squat. Go down, yes. up. He didn't even sweat. So the only thing was um, to make him full range of motion after two months mm -hmm. and as we begin I was behind him he was grabbing the bar and he was a quarter squat and as we ended like after three months every week one exercise he um, went all the way down to his heels and, and I was like okay we do as many squats as possible he grabbed himself and he did 30 squats that's uh, I mean But the thing, what happens at this one point is, that, and it happens also. I mean, you, you put a, like a very hard example of a, like a your grand, granddad, grandparent, granddad, English, my English accent. And but we see this also for uh, normal people going to the gym and say, "Hey, uh, CrossFit, no, you see, I, I just watch a YouTube video, and no, I cannot do anything of that." Yeah, <laughs> dude. 
<laughs> like you're just watching the CrossFit Games. Like, yeah, yeah I, if I want to go running, I don't watch Usain Bolt and say, no, I cannot do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably can. No, of course not. So what's the scale? How you make people come and join to the box, lose this fear of no, this resistance? You have three months with your granddad. Yeah. How you do it with a customer in a weekend, in a free trial? Once, I mean, once they get through the door, it's already easy. Oh, you're here. You want yeah. this. Yeah. But how you bring these guys, afraid of these guys, hey, join, yeah. come in? Um, the thing is, right now, we're, we don't do any marketing or advertising, like, uh, yeah. yeah, telling people who don't know, who, who are not interested in CrossFit to, to do CrossFit, because this is the next step. This is really, really hard. Yeah. Um, we got people, they contact us, they, they come, they want to want to try a free trial. So they come in and they already, yeah, prepare to whatever yeah. they saw yeah. on the internet and what, whatever they think CrossFit is. So um, what we do is we, we got a fundamental or on-ramp class every day for one hour. And we go to the basic movements and when they step in the box, they see on the one side, they see the regular class with any kind of people like mm -hmm. yeah. old, big, small, tall, strong. The 99%. Everything is in the class. So they see, okay, and they start to compare. Okay, this is maybe not me, but I can do this and I can do ring rows. And yeah, the, the, these CrossFit mom is doing it. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can do it too. And then they start the, the fundamentals and we really only do with an with a empty bar. And yeah. we start with a with a broomstick as well. Yeah. We got five kilo bars. That's yeah. the, the the best thing we ever bought. Like five kilo bars because yeah. it's a barbell, but it's only five kilo. Yeah. So they can do the barbell movements, and we start with the empty bar, and we do really really hard skill. Yeah. Focus on skill and um, telling them what we are doing, so they understand. It's not just okay. We do CrossFit. This is it, Cindy. Do uh, five pull-ups or ring rows, whatever. You, every, anybody can do ring rows. So see, you can do ring rows too. But we, we tell them what is the purpose of the ring row to get strength in the upper body, yeah, exactly. to get the shoulder back and down, to really get it um, maybe to, to fix the shoulder when you're sitting on the table all day. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Open so they open. so they know they come here not to hit a workout and to sweat and maybe puke afterwards or hitting some PRs. They come here to put their shoulders back and down to get their shoulders strengthened yeah. up and um, developing some fitness and healthiness, not keeping, yeah, keep, keeping the track of sickness. And this is the, the main part we do in the fundamentals. So we really, really teach, teach, teach and educate. This is, the, this is our, our spirit. We want to educate people in the movements. Yeah. And when we educated them, when they know how the skill is and why we're doing it and why do we do the deep squat and not the heavy weight and the quarter squat, and then we can add some weight and some intensity. Yeah. Sure, we do some intense workouts like burpees and stuff and sit-ups. You can put in some intensity. You will sweat and you will feel like yeah. shit afterwards. Yeah. But uh, it's still easy this skill. Is progression. And, yeah, it's progression. And yeah. that's, this is the, the, the best thing. You really, really start low. Try, to, to, we teach our philosophy of CrossFit. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, then we on-ramp the people. So you started CrossFit, you were saying, this four, small group, four or five people, which, which year was that? Uh, 2011 in January. So it's been six years. How is it now? How Oh, we learned a lot. <laughs> we learned a lot. Because when, when we started, we, the first adopters in the market, is they are the underground fitness. They really yeah. want the basement. They want sweat, no shirt, blood, chalk. chalk. <laughs> anything like that, like scream, shouting. And now we, we want our, our moms, our sisters, our dads, yeah. our friends. Yeah. We want all of them in the box and we want them all to serve a really, really good program. And um, so we divide into, um, we, got a, we got a concept where we got like five, how do you call categories, it? Like uh, categories uh, or yeah. stages. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can up ramp, to the games, yeah. mm -hmm. but you really start with the basement. We start with the uh, we start with the basics. We start with the mobility screening, yeah. so people know if you are any if you've got a lack of mobility somewhere, 
you really, really struggle in any movement yeah. later on. Mm. So you you got a risk of injury. You really not working on your health or on your fitness. You 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 have to do some homework for yourself. Yeah. And this is what we teach as well. If people come in and they can't reach their toes with extended knees, we get them accessory what they can do at home. Yeah. We we write it down. We got a booklet. So you, they get a screening for the mobility. They get a screening for the body body fat percentage so they know where they are. Most people come in and say, yeah, can you teach me muscle up? And I say, yeah, <laughs> show me 10 pull-ups. Yeah. Yeah, I can't exactly. do it. So yeah, we start yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, what tasks or do you have any specific like inspiration uh, to do with that? Or how did you come to that? Was it from the sport therapy thing? Or did, have you also uh, like got inspired from somewhere to do this uh, over the time? Or? Um, as I said, I, I really, I'm really nerdy in movements and scaling and, and how the body works. So yeah. this is kind of a thing from for me, like um, building up levels so yeah. people know, okay, I'm right here. This is a test. I missed maybe one part, but I can fix it. And then the, the benefit will be a kipping pull-up, a toaster bar, a muscle-up, some win. Okay, and um, body fat percentage is a, a really, really big um, health marker yeah. because if you're overweight yeah. you're, you're risky so for health and for your movements if you do kipping movements or if you want to do gymnastic movements like pull-ups push-ups stuff like that you really have a good uh, a relationship <laughs> relation to yeah. a, a ratio between your body weight and your strength yeah. Yeah. so we work on both we work on the the fitness and we work on the composition of your body yeah and you really have to make it, yeah, show the people where they are. So we tell them, if you are not under 20% body fat as a male, uh, after tw uh, uh, beyond 25 as a female, don't you ever try keeping gymnastic movements. No, you will burn yourself, yeah. Yeah, it's a risk. Yeah. And we got, we got different um, um, like rules for, for movements not only scalings as well as rules, you have to do five strict hands and push-ups before you do a kipping hands and push-up. And we teach them why we don't, why is a ki our kipping hands and push-up is on, in our pyramid is like level four. It's a CrossFit specific competi competition movement. It's not a movement you need to get healthier. It's a movement to compete in CrossFit competitions. Yeah. So this is to get these and the people's minds. They, they go to Facebook, they go to yeah, Instagram, they go to the games and they see the kipping hands and push up and the kipping chest to bar pull ups and the muscle ups, everything with a kip. Yeah. But the, the purpose of these kips are endurance, endurance yeah, for, exactly. for these movements, not strength. Yeah. If you don't have the strength, you can't work on endurance in this specific movement. We, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about this a lot and it's about kind of okay uh, about the compensation uh, that if it's in strength or if it's in mobility so you see all these like you have some pro athletes really good weightlifters like heavy like they can lift really heavy fucking weights and you know uh, people are looking up to these guys and and like from just from the eyes of like is that healthy or not it's not it's not the right question because uh, or is the right question if you're looking for health because if you see sure. like a weightlifter and you see okay his name uh, knees are banging in and he's but he's lifting 200k he, his knees are you know uh, all taped up and everything so he can do that and yeah sure like if you're competing if you're going for gold you want to be the best in the world for this yeah um, and you find found a compensation and you want to do that like okay it's a competition is that is your priority to be uh compensate and do this competition like it's up to you but people the broad mass has to understand just because the pro lifter is doing something wrong it doesn't mean that this is the right way yeah, yeah. and uh we said that like what if like we say because uh, i've seen like some good crossfitters here in, in, in Ber uh, berlin in germany and I see like, oh, now I'm injured, now I'm doing this, uh, I'm injured again. And then you see some videos and I see like, hey, but why are you doing these compensation faults when you are practicing? Yeah. 
Like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. That's a good question. And uh, this is a big point as we do, as we serve in the box as well, or put on focus. What is your goal? Yeah. If your goal is to win the gold medal in Olympic lifting, then, boy, don't no, think about your knees. Yeah. If your goal is developing health and fitness over your whole yeah. life, this is a totally different point of view. So, yeah. but guys, I'm sorry. Um, my team is, I think, competing no. in one minute. Can we do a break and? No, we just get to where you just. Yeah. Is that okay? No worries. Of course. Oh. <laughs> Let's go watch. Cool. <laughs>